Okay, so today we're going to take our equations one step further and we're going to look at what we call multi-step equations. Um, the main thing is you're going to notice that we have variables on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation. So the first thing, your main step is going to be to collect the variable terms on one side of the equation. We'll do it always on the left-hand side just to have a process. And then we're going to put all of our numbers or constant terms on the other side of the equation. Okay, so equations that are just a little bit more difficult today. So if we take a look at our first example, you will notice that there's an x on the left and on the right, so we're going to move all the x's to the left, so we're going to have to move that 2x over to the left-hand side. And same thing, we notice that there are numbers on the right-hand side, we're going to move that positive 2 over to the other side. Of course, we're going to do that using opposite operations, exactly like we did last day. Okay, so on my next line, I'm going to do it all in one step. That's where I want you to pay attention to the form and how we write this now in grade 9, and we don't want it to look too complicated, so that's why we need to continue writing it like the way we were yesterday. So on this next line, I know I want to keep my 3x on the left-hand side of the equation. I'm just going to put my equals in the middle so that I have it there. Okay, now I know I also want the 2x that's on the right to come to the left. It's positive 2x, so it's being added. So, of course, we're going to do the opposite, and we're going to subtract the 2x. So it moves to the left-hand side of the equal sign and changes signs. Okay, now on the right-hand side of the equation, we have a minus 4 or a negative 4. And we're going to bring that positive 2 from the left-hand side over to the right-hand side. It's adding 2, so, of course, we're going to subtract 2. Okay, so this is obviously the key line in making sure that we move things over to the other side using opposite operations or opposite sides. Then, of course, we just want to simplify on both sides, so that part is fairly simple. We have 3x minus 2x gives us, of course, 1x. We won't write the 1 later on, but I thought I'd just write it here so you could see it. And then on the right-hand side, we have negative 4 subtract 2, which is, of course, negative 6. Okay, and like I said, you'll never actually see the one when it's published in a textbook as an answer or anything. So this, of course, means that x equals negative 6. Okay, so we want to simplify on either side. That one was fairly simple because we just ended up with 1x already, so there was nothing more to do. But we'll see in the next one we'll have to do a little bit more work. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Okay, so if you look at this one right here, again, you're going to notice you have an M term there, an M term there, and an M term there. So I'm going to take all the M terms to the left-hand side of the equation. And then I have my negative 2 here on the right-hand side, and I'm going to take this 5 and I'm going to move it over. Okay, so that's going to be our first step. Like I said, we're going to keep the negative 3M on the left-hand side. Okay, and then I want to move the other m terms over. So I have a positive 2m. It's going to move to the left and become minus 2m. Okay, and then I have a negative 4m. That's going to move to the left and become a positive 4m. Okay, and then we'll go to the right-hand side. We have a negative 2 on the right-hand side. And we're going to take that 5. Okay, notice there's no sign in front of that 5. Remember that, of course, means it's positive or it means it's being added. And we're going to move that to the other side and it's going to become negative. Okay, then just like in our previous example, we want to simplify. We're collecting like terms. We've already identified that these are all m terms, so they are all like terms. So we have negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5, plus 4 is negative 1m. Okay, and on the right-hand side, we have negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. Okay, now we do want it to just be an M here and not have the negative 1. So we're going to take this negative 1. Now we have multiplication happening between those two, so we're going to do the opposite. We're going to take this negative 1 to the other side. We're going to do the opposite. We are going to divide it to the other side. So when we write it out, it's going to look like this. M equals negative 7 divided by negative 1. And, of course, that means that m equals 7. Okay, now, like we talked about yesterday, and now we're going to make this process a little bit more official, we should always be able to check our answer. Okay, and the way we check our answer is we take this answer of m equals 7, and we are going to substitute it into both the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation. Okay, so now we're going to actually do this algebraically, and I'm going to show you exactly what you have to write. So the first thing you need to know is you must set it up in a chart exactly like this. Okay, this of course requires you to make sure that you understand what the left-hand side of the equation is. So if we look back to the original 
you'll see the left-hand side was 5 minus 3m, the left of the equal sign, and the right-hand side was 2m minus 2 minus 4m. Okay, so now on both sides, I'm going to take m equals 7, and I'm going to substitute it in. So on the left-hand side, it's going to look like this. We have our 5 minus 3 times 7 for m. Let's simplify that just a little bit. That gives us, of course, 5 minus 21, which, of course, gives us negative 16. Okay, now let's go to the right-hand side. Okay, so we're going to have 2. We're going to substitute in our 7 for m. Okay, we have minus 2, minus 4, and then times 7. So let's simplify that just a little bit. We're going to get 14 minus 2, minus 28. So we have 14 minus 2 is 12, minus 28 is negative 16. Now, what does this mean? Why did we do this? Okay, note we got negative 16 on both sides. The negative 16 actually means nothing, but what we, what we care about is the fact that they're both negative 16. Okay, so because, therefore, the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, we got negative 16 on both, this means... Okay, that our answer was correct. It means that m equals 7 is correct. Okay, so we're going to work on those, on those charts and on those checking. Obviously, we could do this for every single question that we do, but we won't do it for every. But in every, in, in to, the questions that you do tomorrow, we'll probably do it, you know, I don't know, like six or ten times, just to make sure that you understand this process. If you always had to extra time, of course, you could do it and know that every single one of your answers was correct. Okay, so we're going to move on to the last example. We're just going to take it one step further. Okay, so I want you to have a look at this question. Okay, what do you notice about this question, of course? You notice that this question has brackets. Okay, and that simply means that we're going to use our distributive property that we learned back in Unit 1, and the first step is going to be to get rid of the brackets. So when you see brackets, the first step is just to get rid first. Okay, so let's try this question. First step, we're going to use our distributive property, and we're going to get rid of those brackets. Okay, and if we were to put some nice little arrows in here just like we did in class. We know that that 2 gets multiplied by both of them in the bracket and here we know the negative 3 gets multiplied by the x and the 5 and of course not the negative 6 because it's not in brackets. So if we simplify that we're going to get 2x minus 6 on the left. On the right we're going to have negative 3x minus 15 and then our minus or negative 6. Okay, now we follow exactly, now that we've got rid of the brackets, it's fairly straightforward. We do exactly what we did in the previous examples. You try it with me. Remember, we're going to put all the x's on the left-hand side. We're going to put all the numbers on the right-hand side. Okay, so on the left, I like my 2x. I need my negative 3x to come over. We do the opposite, so it becomes plus 3x or positive 3x. On the right-hand side, we have our negative 15 our minus 6, and we're going to take the negative 6 from the left-hand side, this one over here, and we're going to move that to the right-hand side, and it's going to become positive 6. Okay, now we simplify on both sides. 2x plus 3x is 5x. You can simplify all in one step. We have negative 15, and then we have minus 6 plus 6, which is nothing, so we're left with just negative 15. Okay, and then here we have a 5 times x, and we know to get rid of this 5, of course, we do opposite. We divide it to the other side. Okay, so we end up with negative 15 over 5, and x equals negative 3. Okay, and again, we could check our work. Okay, we're going to make sure that we practice that idea. Go ahead and check it now if, if you want to practice that idea. Okay, and we'll continue practicing equations like this in class tomorrow. Thanks.